Ugh. Tastes like dry erase marker. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird because this is a wet erase marker. <laughs> they taste similar. Do you know from experience? No, I just assume they do. <laughs> Welcome back to Bomb Shelf. I'm Josh. I'm Keith. And I'm Eric. And today is our very first clearance day episode. And because it's our first episode, I'm gonna run you through what we're gonna be doing today. Today, the whiskey that uh, Joyce is going to explain to or introduce to you in a moment is a whiskey that generally does not fall within our price range of $30 and under. Uh, so anywhere above it, and somehow, some way, we were able to get it for under $30. So this is a whiskey that we were able to still purchase for under $30, but Generally speaking, you shouldn't necessarily expect to either, either see it or see it at that low of a price. So this bottle may be uh, on clearance. It may have been uh, on sale at much lower than $3. Um, or maybe we just found a random store that happened to have a random bottle for really cheap somewhere in the middle of nowhere. So what we're going to do is I'm going to pour in one of these glasses the whiskey for today. And I'm going to pour another whiskey from our shelf here. I'm not going to tell them which one. That's a whiskey that is similar to what the clear state whiskey is today. We're gonna to go back and forth. Uh, we're gonna look at both of them. They're gonna tell me which one they prefer, and then I'm gonna tell them the price of the actual budget whiskey and ask them how much more they'd be willing to pay for the one that they actually enjoy. So with that, Joyce, can you tell our viewers at home what we're drinking today? Today's clearance day whiskey is Johnny Walker Song of Ice. Johnny Walker Song of Ice was a limited edition blended scotch for the Game of Thrones TV series. It was a crisp and refreshing counterpart to the Song of Fire blend that was sold at the same time. Song of Ice comes in at 80.4 proof. Its retail price was $40, but we were able to get it on clearance at our local store for $20. Is this thrifty whiskey better than a comparable budget bottle? Let's find out. Thanks, Joyce. So I've had these guys leave the room. I have poured the clearance day whiskey in a glass of some sort, and I poured the actual whiskey in another glass. They don't know which ones, and I'm not gonna tell you which ones either until later. So let's, uh, let's dive in. We're gonna start with whiskey A. Hmm. I'm getting like buttered toast, like salted caramel. It, yeah, I'm getting a little salt. I don't know about the caramel. I'm definitely getting the salt, it, there, and there's a sweetness. I think that might be where I'm getting like a salted butter. Or, yeah. You know. Yeah, I'm definitely getting a little bit of salt, a little bit of malt, grain. The malt, I think, is the the butter that I'm smelling. All I can taste is butter. You said the word butter and all I'm getting is now is butter. Not bad, it, it is. And I don't know quite how to describe the finish on that. Yeah. It's kind of watered down. Salty, peppery, a mm -hmm. little bit of pepper. You go white pepper. Medium finish. Not yeah. too long, not too short. The finish is there. It's light, but it's, it's medium finish. Ooh. Shortbread, a little creamy. Still, it's buttery. Yeah, oh, that grain. It's the sweetness. Yeah, it's got it's very similar notes, but it's similar notes. But yeah, more but more full-bodied notes. Yes, and more put together. Yeah. Have you ever had Vienna Fingers cookies? No, I don't think it's I have. like a shortbread sandwich cookie. Oh, kind of, okay, yeah, kind of thing. That's almost what I'm smelling here, including the, the creamy center or whatever that is. That's not Oreo cream. Man, that just makes me think of like November to December cookies and... Yeah, straight sugar cookie. Kind of like my wife's shortbread because she adds some spices to it. Oh. And it's sometimes a little sweet. Slightly salty on the finish. No, not slightly. It's salty. It's salty on the finish. Yeah. But not bad salty. No. All right, um, so right now, do you guys have a clear one that you feel is better? 
I I think I would have to compare nose to nose, right. taste well, to taste. Let's dive in and do that. So to we're finish. gonna do this. We might get this, make, have this cut out or zoom. Nose to nose, hands down to me, it's B. Nose to nose, palette to palette, finish to finish. B takes it in every category for me. I, I'm tempted to say that now, but well, I think I want to smell B first and then smell A first so that I'm not going based on yeah. the memory, the specific memory of B. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna go ahead and uh, go nose to nose and uh, we'll be back with you with some results in a moment. All right, we're back. Thanks for waiting. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and kind of confirm what we think about the two. Uh, give some final thoughts, and um, we'll Lucille tell me which one you think is better. I think A is a little more fruit forward and a little saltier, and B is a little more sweet, buttery, maltiness, sugary. Yeah, I, I think with A, I'm. Maybe it's weird, but I'm almost picking up a, a slight melon. Hmm. I could see that. Uh, yeah. yeah, like watermelon or... I'm getting more like a cantaloupe. Yeah, I was going to say watermelon or cantaloupe, but yeah, I'm getting, a, I'm definitely getting a strong melon sense from A. Is that the one you're getting the fruit from? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, A is more, more fruity, whereas B can be more grain more, shortbread. Yeah, more grain. Buttery, sweet, sugary. Yeah. 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 All right, so which one do you like better? Personally, I like B better. I think um, uh, I described it off camera as A is saying like, hey, hi, I'm here for the party. And B is like, hey, here I am. Uh, so it's it's much more bold, uh, much more robust, but they're both very welcome. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Both are invited to the party. Both yeah. are definitely invited yeah. to the party. Yeah. Okay, so you think uh, B so is just think, more the life of the party for me. So you yeah. like B better too? Same. Yeah. yeah. I, like B yeah. Better. I also like B I also like B better. I can understand if you liked A better if you like more of the fruit notes and you don't care for the multi notes. So I'm gonna tell you what the of the actual price of the of the actually budget whiskey. Mm -hmm. And you're telling me how much more you're going to pay for uh, the better one. Okay. Okay. So the actual the, the price for the actual budget whiskey tends to be around fifteen to seventeen. Really? Of oh, the cheaper one of the actual budget. Yeah, whiskey. that just makes it hard because I would have expected the budget whiskey to be like in the twenty to twenty five. <laughs> I mean, they're right. both that that good, so that makes it even tougher. Keeping in mind that the actual budget one is fifteen to seventeen. Right. Um. I guess instead of asking you how much you'd be willing to pay for the one you like, or yeah, I'm just gonna ask you which one, how much would you pay for the one you like, knowing that the budget one is whatever one it is, is 15 to 17. Yeah, that makes it tough because I expected the budget one to even be higher than 15 to 17. So knowing the budget one is 15 to 17. <sighs> that just throws everything out. I'm, uh, I would definitely be willing to. For the, for the one I like better, for B, mm -hmm. I would be willing to pay in the upper 20s, probably 28, yeah. I'd say. Knowing that B I, could be that budget one. Yeah. I could just be like no, trashing I mean, this real good one. I'm just real like- Real good one. It, it's hard for me because I would be, they're both so good that I'd be paying, willing to pay 25 for the budget. Yeah. Even though it's 15 to 17. So yeah, I'm with you. I would have to go 29. I'd have to go right at the cost for us, right at the I mean, right at the limit. Yeah. Okay. I'd have to go 30 bucks. Okay. So what I'm gonna do now is I want to tell them what the retail price is of the non-budget bottle. Okay. Okay. The retail price of the non-budget bottle is forty dollars. Wow. Now I paid twenty for it. Whoa. So I'm sure knowing what we know about whiskeys, we would know which one was the budget and which one wasn't. But 
All right, so first question I'm gonna ask is, uh, well, what kind of whiskey do you guys think this is? I'm, I'm definitely leaning scotch. Too many cereal notes, too yeah. many. Scotch, yep. All right. It's yeah. definitely a scotch. Yep, so yeah. we are dealing with blended scotches here. They're both blended scotches. Wow. Um, both un unpeated blended scotches. I would have not have, I would have not have guessed blended, but I guess yep. we everything on our shelf has been blended. Yep. So. All right, so clearance. Yeah, I guess you're right. The clearance item today is Johnny Walker's Song of Fire. Wait. That's song, song of Ice. Of ice. Song of Ice. Song of Ice. And then the non-budget bottle was Cuddy Sark. Really? The actual the budget bottle was Cuddy Sark. Okay. Good. So now knowing this, uh, do you still think which one do you, which one do you think is the clearance and which one do you think is not the clearance? I'm gonna go A is clearance, B is not. Or sorry. Other way around. A is the one, is the budget. B is so A, A is Cuddy Sark and B is... Yeah. Johnny Walker? Okay. Yeah. I'm going to guess the other way. Okay. I'm going to guess I like Cuddy Sark more than Song of Ice. Okay. Uh, so yeah. This is B. Cuddy Sark is B. Wow. This... Dang. This retails for $40. Is on clearance in Pennsylvania for twenty, and still plenty of bottles on the shelf. Yeah, it's so it's there, okay. So it, there may be a reason why it's been re in clearance for so low. Oh yeah, for forty dollars, there's absolutely no way I'd pick that up. For twenty, knowing that it's a, I see. I, I like, was assuming I like B so this much was, better. I like. I was assuming that this was the. Yeah. Higher priced one, and I'd be willing to pay twenty eight for that, it. That is this cool. one. I would pay that fifteen to seventeen dollars for. So, would you pay the clearance price of twenty dollars? I would not pay the clearance price of twenty dollars. Yeah, same here. All right. So, I would pay seventeen, not twenty. All right, I'm going to run through some information real quick, just to kind of get that out there. Uh, so, you can go watch the video on this whiskey up here. So, this is, if I remember correctly, this is Game of Thrones collector. Series, yeah. right? Yep. Okay. Yep. So, um, 80.4 proof. No age statement. Uh, it's a mix of single malts from Kleinlish Distillery and Grain Whiskey. Uh, Kleinlish uses sherry and bourbon casks. Uh, so, this is produced obviously by Johnny Walker, and, who's owned by Diageo. Uh, and Highland is a Kleinlish, or sorry, Kleinlish is a Highland distillery. Distiller is the only place I could find a rating for this, 82. And the tasting notes that were generally available for this was nose, butterscotch and fruity, palate, vanilla, honey, floral, apple, wax, and finish, medium finish with a lingering sweetness. Thanks for all of you for watching. If you like what we're doing, hit that like button, hit subscribe so you can see more videos. And now a toast to you. May the winds of fortune sail you. May you sail a gentle sea. May it always be the other guy who says, this, this drinks, drinks on me. me. I'm shocked that I liked Cuddy Sark better than Johnny Walker. I am, but I'm not.